Feed the Beast has some of the best mod packs ever made, but how do you download the most up-to-date version of these packs using the Feed the Beast app? Well, in this video, we're going to show you exactly how to download and install the FTB app in order to play Feed the Beast mod packs. Now, first things first, you want to go to the second link in the description down below. That's going to take you here, and this is the official download page for the FTB app. Currently, it says download for Windows for us because, well, we're doing this video on Windows. The similar process for Mac and Linux, and you can get those downloads here. Now, let's just go ahead and click on the Download for Windows button to start the download. While that's downloading, what if you want to start a Feed the Peace server? Well, that's where our company, Simple Game Hosting, comes in. Go to the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash sgh, to start your very own Minecraft server running a Feed the Beast mod pack. At Simple Game Hosting, we have a super easy mod pack installer, where in just a few clicks, you can get any Feed the Beast mod pack that you want installed on your server and ready to play with your friends. On top of that, we make customizing your server super easy if you want to change the message of the day or something like that. We have an amazing file manager that lets you do all of that, and should you get stuck at any part of the process, we have an amazing help center to help you out alongside live chat support. So if you want to start your own Feed the Beast server or any other mod pack server, whether it's a Curse Forge, Feed the Beast, or any other mod pack, check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below. The breakdown to XYZ slash SGH to start your very own Feed the Beast or other Minecraft server. Nevertheless, as you can see, FTB has downloaded here in the bottom left. You may need to keep or save this file, but most likely it will just download. It's 100% safe to download as long as the URL is feed-the-beast.com at the top and you're downloading it through our links. Nevertheless, once you've downloaded it, we need to find it. It's going to be in your downloads folder. Click the little windows icon, open the start menu, type in downloads, have your downloads file folder here, and then there's Feed the Beast. I'm going to move it to the desktop for this video, but you don't have to do that by any means. Nevertheless, to install this, just double click on it. It's like installing any other program. You may get like a user account control warning. If you do, just go ahead and press yes on that to move past it. For some reason, uh, my recording software doesn't record those, so it might have just been a black screen there for just a second, like it flashed black screen or something. Sorry about that, but you might get that. Go ahead and proceed through it, and then the FTB app installer will open. Once this is open, you want to select your language here, which for us is English. Click Next and continue on through. Do you want to get Overwolf? All of this stuff. We don't want Overwolf, so we're just going to go ahead and create a desktop shortcut for the FTB app, and I have agreed and accepted to Overwolf's terms. You might ask who is Overwolf? Well, FTB is built on the top of Overwolf, and that's why that's mentioned. Click next here, and then click accept and install, and now it's going ahead and installing FTB in the FTB app, right like so, and it's using the Overwolf platform, which allows for all of this. If you have, by the way, CurseForge, you probably already have Overwolf, and they're built on the same kind of back end using Overwolf. Nevertheless, so sit back and I'll meet you once this is installed. There we go, Feed the Beast is now installed. As you can see, click launch and now it's going to open on up right like so. On the first launch, it's going to walk you through some things that you might not have in subsequent launches, but we're also going to be walking you through pretty much all of this in this video here as well. Not only do we want to show you how to get the app, we want to show you how to get in game with a mod pack, go over potential issues, all of the stuff that you can get used to if you're first time here to the Breakdown channel, or if you're a returning viewer, you know that's what we do here. So as we can see, things are now setting up and it will load right on in. It's loading all of the mod packs up, making sure everything is, you know, got all the versions and all that stuff. You will need to install individual mod packs, but it's just making sure that they're all in the launcher ready for you to install right like so. So here we can see all of the featured mod packs. If we come over to the left hand side, we can see the library. This is going to be the mod packs that we install once they are installed. And then we can come over here to browse as well to search through the different mod packs. We've got discover. This is just going to kind of show you a random mod pack, I believe. And we can go through the next right like so and check all of those out with videos. And then of course there is news support and settings. Now, one of the things that is worth changing in settings is your Minecraft window width, which is what Minecraft will set by default when it opens up. I'm going to go ahead and change that to 1080p, but you can change this to anything. You can also set up custom Java arguments. By default, though, there will be some, and I'll show you how to change these on an individual basis. You can set your different download settings here, other app settings, and integrations as well as the proxy settings. But overall, the only thing you really need to worry about here is going to be the instances right here with this, uh, you know, setting the window size specifically. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and install our first mod pack. So to do that, I would recommend going to browse here. I'm going to actually grab FTB Unstable because why not? I figure that'll be fun. Go ahead and click on the download button on the right hand side here. And then you want to make sure you're downloading the most recent version just because it's going to have the most bug fixes and things like that. And then go ahead and click install. Now, once this is finished installing, I'm going to actually download another mod pack. That way you know exactly what to look for if you have 
multiple FTB mod packs installed. It doesn't really change anything, but it's cool to see that you can have multiple ones installed at the same time. So this is going to take a minute. As you can see, it's going to download over 189 files, but we'll see you once it's done. So there we go. As you can see, mod pack is installed. If you click go to instance, it's going to take you to the mod pack where you can click play. However, let's go ahead and like I said, add in one more pack here. Now, one of my favorite and one of the most popular packs for Feed the Beast is actually going to be a stone block here. So we go ahead and click on the download button there. And then it, by default, the most recent version is selected. Click install. By the way, it's not uncommon if uh, this doesn't move, apparently. That was a bug that I just had that uh, it said zero files. It looked like it wasn't doing anything. And then it completed all at once. I'm um, guessing that's a bug in the app. I will report that. But just keep in mind if that happens for you. It's normal. It will still download. It might just take a while. So just kind of sit back and relax. It took about three to four minutes for that last mod pack to download. And this one's a lot larger. So we'll let this download. And then we'll go ahead and launch up FTB Unstable. I'll show you what that process looks like. And you'll be good to go. All right. FTB Stoneblock 3 is installed. We can go to Instance. But how do you manage multiple packs? Well, that's where this library on the left-hand side that I mentioned comes in. As you can see, we have Stoneblock. We can click Play there. And we have FTB Unstable. If you just hover over these, you can click Play. And it will go ahead and get started. Now, as you can see, you will need to log into Minecraft. How are you going to do that? Most likely, you're going to be using Microsoft. 90% of players at this point are now using Microsoft. And when it does that, it's going to open up this, where we want to go ahead and click Microsoft and log in. This is the official MicrosoftLive.com website where we can log in. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Once you have logged in, you'll kind of get this thing where you're saying, hey, are you sure you want FTB to be able to access your account? Yes, we do. Perfectly good to do this. It's the only way to play FTP packs. So you really don't have much of a choice. Then you're going to get this kind of pop up. If this doesn't work, you can copy the code below and enter it into the app. So just copy and paste it there. But let's go ahead and open the FTB app and it will launch right like so. But if you did need to copy this code, I'm sure you can go back and enter it in here as well. But as you can see, you're all set. Go ahead and click finish. And now it's going to initialize this pack and I believe it will launch it. If you do get this pop up, we we'll go ahead and make sure public and private networks are selected. If you don't do that, it's not a huge deal. But it is something that later, if you decide to play on servers with simple game hosting or something like that, it can make it easier. But now we just kind of sit back and wait. It's going to download some files, get everything good, and then that will launch right on in to Minecraft opening up. So that's one of the coolest things. There's no Minecraft launcher involved. It's all handled from the FTB app. So it kind of launches Minecraft itself without having to go through the traditional launcher. With that being said, I should have shown you um, exactly what you need to do in order to add more RAM to this. By default, they're going to set how much RAM they think they should have for this mod pack. As you can see, 6 gigabytes in this case. But after we launch up this mod pack, I will show you how to do that. So maybe if you need that, skip forward in the video just a little. That's my bad. So here we are. Minecraft is open. Click continue. And there it is. FTB unstable. And obviously, you can get playing here. You can create a simple game hosting server. Join that in the multiplayer menu. Start a single player world. All of that is perfectly fine. And basically, you're just kind of playing Minecraft at this point. Now, my only basically advice for this part is give it time. Modded Minecraft is extraordinarily resource intensive. It can take modded servers 10, 20 minutes to start, even on the best hardware out there, like what we have at Simple Game Hosting. Same thing for modded Minecraft, just launching up here. It can take 10, 15, I've actually had it take 30 minutes for large mod packs in the past to just launch to the main menu. Then you gotta wait to get in game and stuff like that. It takes time, and so wait, wait, wait. Now, one thing that can help with that is RAM. Now, as I said, you can set RAM on an individual basis. So just go in here to settings, and then you can scroll down and see how much instance memory, memory is synonymous with RAM, this needs. Right now it's 6 gigabytes, but we can up it. We could up this up to 15 if we wanted to, but usually I wouldn't more use more than half your RAM, so in my case that would be 8 gigabytes, but you could use as low as 4 or 3, but it's probably not even going to launch if you go too low there. So nevertheless, that's how you can change your RAM. Once you've done that, it is automatically saved, and you can do that on a per instance basis. So if we wanted to come over to stone block and set this one, we could go into settings and say this one, we actually want to dedicate 9 gigs of RAM to. At this point though, that is how you can download the FTB app and start playing FTB mod packs with it. If you've got any questions, be sure to let us know in the comment section down below, and be sure to check out Simple Game Hosting, the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash sgh, to start your very own FTB mod pack server in just a few clicks. Nevertheless, my name is Nick, we'll see you in the next video, and I am out. Peace.